We deal with a faulty starter motor, a squall, and catch a few more fish on the final 70 mile passage of our trip north to Breakwater Marina in Townsville. This morning, that bloody engine would not start again. We had the generator running and each time we've plugged in the generator it's just gone bang and started. This time, it took forever and I thought we were going to be stuck in bum nowhere. Let me tell you, Upstart is a beautiful place to visit but it's not a place to be stuck. We actually were stuck here once before and We'll put the link below for you to understand why we don't want to be stuck here ever again. Anyway, not to worry, this is our last leg. Mixed emotions, you know, I felt like this time round it's been a bit of a delivery run. We haven't really, you know, we've had to push, push, push because we needed those weather windows to go, go, go. And yeah, it's... Um, so it hasn't been the most relaxing and obviously if you've been watching all of our um, previous episodes it hasn't been the easiest because we've had a number of things that we've had to deal with along the way and that's what sailors have to do. Sailors do have to be mechanics, electricians, plumbers, you name it, we have to be out here and we have to be problem solvers and sometimes those problem solvers are a bit beyond us and we're thinking that maybe the starter motor is one of those things. Rob's coming along to go below and flake. We're, we anchored in five meters yesterday afternoon, but big tides here, so it's going up two and a half. So yes, plenty of anchor down. Rob's doing his flake. Yeah, I'm down into the anchor lock and a push over about it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so mixed emotions knowing that this is our last passage before Townsville. But also good, you know, this morning, you know, waking early, laying there going, okay, we've got other jobs to do when we're in Townsville for our dream time to get her ready to go into Asia. And um, that is going to be exciting exciting because we know that we're going on another adventure exciting that we know that we're going to discover new things exciting because we can do it anyway let's hope the rest of this 70 odd nautical mile trip today has no hiccups that would be nice okay so mizzen is up we're just unhooking a pole because current wind is just forward of the beam so we should be able to sail jib and jigger however that engine will be running all day we won't be turning it off because if we have the opportunity to go into the marina when we arrive there we don't want to be fart assing around with the 
dawn motor, well, the starter motor and the solenoids. 5 a.m. Sunday, the 27th of November. There's a catamaran actually leaving with us this morning. They came in very late, tying a little, you know, runabout fishing boat. We saw a very similar fishing boat as we passed late yesterday afternoon, but there was no signal that they were in problem. They looked like they were anchored and fishing, um, but it looks like the same little boat. And they're under tow ahead of us. Goodbye, Cape Upstart. We've spent some time here um, in the past. We'll put a link below in the episode that we did here on Cape Upstart, which is beautiful here, isn't it, Rob? Absolutely gorgeous, lovely. Yeah. Oh, the Uh, on the bow of our dream time, making our way up the coast from uh, Cape Upstart. We are heading along the shore of uh, Cape Bowling Green. Now this is a sand spit that just goes <laughs> for ever. That's right, you'd expect a Cape to be, you know, huge, big mountains. I mean, that's what Cape Upstart is. And then you get to Cape Bowling Green and it's a sand spit and it goes forever and ever. <laughs> yeah, we um, we left the anchorage and the, and the first waypoint where we have to make our first turn was five hours away. Yes. We're, um, we've been going for uh, a bit over two and a half hours now and we've done about 16 nautical miles. We've got 52, 53 to go, so it's a long trip today. It is a long trip today, so needless to say, we are motor sailing. The direction of the wind is, you know, <laughs> yeah. You will notice that there is no mainsail up. As you, as we as know, you know yeah. the story, we've yeah. uh, had, got some damage there, so it's away. Yep. We're sailing with our uh, Two Genoa, yep. our staysail, and our mizzen back yep. there and the motor ticking away to keep us going at six knots so that we get there in daylight. Yeah, I mean, we're hoping that if we get in in time, we may be going into the marina um, so that we don't have to anchor out in what they call the duck pond just outside the marina. It's not the greatest holding and we could get a little bit of chop in there tonight with the way the um, wind is. So yep. it'd be nice to be able to get straight into the marina if we can. So we're almost finished our run to Breakwater Marina in Townsville. Um, a beautiful Sunday morning here it on the water. It is stunning, isn't it? Uh, got some nice sunrise shots, etc. again after our, uh, well, got up at 3.30 this morning. Yes. To get ready to go on the first flight. And we hope you're all having a fantastic weekend, whatever Absolutely, you're doing. Absolutely, yeah. So have a great one, guys, and we will talk to you tomorrow. Bit of a squall ahead of us near the actual tip of uh, Cape Bowling Green. 
been watching it develop on radar. So just as a precaution, we've actually rolled away the uh, the Genoa. We're just proceeding with the staysail and the uh, mizzen. Of course, we're not using the main at all at the moment. And uh, chugging away with a little bit of engine power. We're hoping we can just sneak around the edge of this one, but if we get the decks washed, we get the decks washed. But whenever there's a squall around, we uh, think it a little bit prudent to reduce sail. So that's, that's what we've done. So how do you feel about a fully enclosed cockpit when it rains? <laughs> I love our fully enclosed cockpit. We would be drenched now and even though it's warm temperature in tropical weather, you still get cold with the rain and the wind. So it is so nice and I can see because having to wear glasses all the time, you just can't see in this sort of weather when it, you know, I used to wear my ski goggles. Oh, it sounds ridiculous, but I can see it at least. Yeah, no. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. So it's okay then? Oh yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> We've just taken our fishing line in because we're coming up to the green zone and you can see that the corner of the green zone is 1.3 nautical miles off our starboard at the moment and if we spin around here we have a trawler there now at the moment it looks like we're on a collision course but he would need to be trawling through the green zone to actually grab us. Yeah, he's got his nets out. Absolutely has his nets out. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, we're in the green zone. So he has to be in the green yeah, zone. Good morning everyone. Well yes we are in Townsville and we now have to get this boat organised. So our work begins. 
because we're going to be leaving her in cyclone season and heading back to Brisbane just for Christmas with the family, we need to make sure she's nice and secure. And secure to us means that every sail is taken off, every line is taken off. She's double lined to the dock with her dock lines and extra fenders, everything that we can make sure that she can be prepared we will be doing down and two to go. I was going to say one but we've still got another two sails to go. Oh well, it's fun. Part of our preparation for leaving the boat over the Christmas break is to rub every surface over with double strength vinegar. This we hope will help us eliminate as much mould as possible. We're not saying that we'll actually have no mould but the more we can do this, the better we are. We actually also will leave every locker open. Any locker that I can actually wipe out with vinegar, I will as well. Looks a bit of a mess up here in the V booth, but that's all the winter stuff that we've actually taken out that we don't need when we're going into Asia and we will be storing that as well. So that's all gone into um, those suction bags all being dried out and into suction bags and hopefully that will save all of our clothes from going on as well. It's spring cleaning. Another thing that we have done and we don't know whether it will work but we have cut up the foil that you have in your windscreens um, in cars and put them all into our porthole areas. This we think is just trying to keep the heat out of the boat so that we're not building more humidity in here. We've actually popped them up and we're surprised how cool it is actually already with um, those up there. So we'll see how it goes. We're just trying everything we can to try and keep the boat as dry as possible and as cool as possible while we're away. So our biggest tool with uh, fighting the potential mould up here in this tropical uh, humid environment it's this little baby here. It's a uh, dehumidifier. We had a very good look at all the range of what was available and settled on this one, mainly for its capacity. It's actually built for a bigger area than we're doing here with uh, our dream time. But it also has a fantastic feature in that it has a pump. So the water that it takes out of the uh, air Rather than putting into a drip tray like many of the cheaper dehumidifiers, this one pumps it up and out and we can have it running out the, uh, the drain of the galley. Uh, we've been running it for uh, ooh, about a week now and it really does make a difference to the humidity level inside the boat. Now when we go away, it's going to be totally locked up. Uh, we have to have all the hatches down, all the companionways closed and locked up uh, for it to be secure in case we do get the side plate. So this is going to be very important to try and keep that humidity out of the air inside the boat and uh, battle that potential uh, mould that uh, so often turns up in locked up boats in the tropics. Between all of the, our strategies, we're hoping we can at least limit the amount that we get. We'll talk more about our preparations and the Breakwater Marina's cyclone management plan in the next episode. If you'd like to see more of the behind the scenes on our dream time, receive daily sit rep videos when we're sailing, track our travels in real time, find out where we are right now, and meet up with us if we're in your area, then please head over to our Patreon site and join the Dreamtime Sail virtual crew. Membership starts at less than a cup of coffee. We'd like to thank everyone who supports us to make these videos possible. Your encouragement is what keeps us going. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. It's free and click the bell button to be notified when we release each video. See you next time.